Hi, this is Jose Palomino with another episode of the Revenue Throughput Podcast. Our guest today is Todd Hockenberry. And Todd is at toddhockenberry.com, but he's a specialist on this idea of customer-centric selling. How to align your organization with your best customer. So I look forward to a great conversation with Todd. Join us now as we welcome him to our show. And welcome, Todd, to the Revenue Throughput Podcast. Uh, Thanks for having me, Jose. My pleasure to be here. Well, Todd, you know, one thing uh, that I think would be helpful for our listeners is to give us a little context. Who who do you typically work with? Um, It's called, his name's Walt. Um, We have a persona that we created right right after we started our business. Um, My wife and I started our business a little over 12 years ago. And um, we love the show Breaking Bad. So it's uh, named after Walt from Breaking Bad. Okay. (laughs) And um, our persona is a person who, it could be a man or a woman, but it, it's, um, we have a surprisingly large number of female clients too, but which is another story, but um, it's a person who runs a privately held company that typically is in the B2B space. And many of them are in the industrial and manufacturing space, but are stuck when it comes to making the, the transition from traditional marketing, traditional sales to digital, right? That's kind of where we started. These were people that knew they had a they had a problem. They knew they had a gap. They weren't generating leads. They weren't getting found online. They didn't have good content. They were they were kind of in the traditional marketing mindset and traditional sales mindset, but knew they needed to change. Right. So lots of people fit that description, but the key is the mindset. We look for people that have the mindset of, we're here. We need. We know we need to go there. We need to change. And um, you know, we. I have a quote in our book. In, uh, code inbound organization, it was everybody wants to grow, but no one wants to change. And our job is to help people change so that they can adapt to the the behavior of modern buyers. And that's even changed a lot in the last year and a half, obviously, to sure. COVID. So we look for people who are in the B2B space that need help uh, going from here to there with digital marketing, sales, and service or success, and are willing to change. Now, we, we generally, and I think most of our listeners would be in that same kind of category that you just described, mostly industrial, manufacturing, distribution, maybe some professional services. Mm-hmm. Um, so you, do, you start it, and it's interesting, you focus on mindset. So what I have found often, and I'd like your reflection on this, sometimes it's not that they don't want to make the change, is they're overwhelmed with these new set of choices that weren't even there 20 years ago, right? So what would you tell an owner in terms of, some of the first things they can do to sort through the noise before they make a decision what they, they need to do this or that. Like, how do you sort through the noise? Uh, it's interesting. There's, um, uh, you get this question every once in a while where people will say, what's more important? Who's more important, your customers or your employees, right? And, mm-hmm. and in our book, a person we interviewed said, who do you love more, your mother or your wife, right? And, and it's like both, right? You can't pick one or the other. So the point is that where you start is you look at your team and your employees and your customers, and are they aligned? Or, or is your culture, your mission, your operational structure, your strategies, are they aligned with what your buyers want, right? These are pretty basic things, but it, it is surprising to me how many people and how many companies out there don't spend the time to, to really look at their customers and understand their customers from their point of view. And I'll go back to our first question. I said, our, you asked who our, who our ideal client is, and that's Walt, right? We have a very clear picture of who we help the most. And if you come to my website or you call me and you don't help and you don't fit that, I, I re- refer you to somebody else because you don't fit who we help the most, right? Because I understand how to help them and how to help them change. So th- the point is, um, you've got to really look at yourself in, in a really critical way, shop yourself, look at yourself from the inside, look mm-hmm. at yourself from your customer's point of view, and understand if the way you behave is the way people expect you to behave and act and service them and take care of them today. And again, it's surprising how many companies don't really look at how they actually take care of customers. That sounds so yeah, but- basic. No, but you know, I, I'm I'm visualizing. I don't know if it's Walt that I'm channeling, but I'll, uh, maybe it's not Walt. It's the other guy. It's, it's you know, it's, it's Joe or whatever. But Joe's thinking he's hearing you, and he's saying, you know what, I I provide a good service at a fair price. I have good people that've been with me for a long time. We treat our customers well. What? Why are we making this sound like complex and mysterious and digital? Why can't I just do what I've been doing all this time? 
Sure. That's a, I really like that question. It's a great question because we get that. That's the resistance, right? That's the pushback to say, you know, we, we have good products. We have, we take care of customers. I just saw a survey that says, said something along the lines of 75% of companies say they're customer centric, but if you ask their customers, less than 15% of those customers will say those companies are, there is a huge disconnect between what people think they are and what their customers know they are. So that's the, that's the gap we're trying to bridge. And um, I would say the difference is, how, look at yourself. How do you shop today? Mm-hmm. D- do you expect the same kind of shopping experience today that you did even two years ago or 10 years ago? I know I don't. I'll just take groceries, for example, right? Two years before COVID hit, we went to the grocery store, waited in line. Okay, then we tolerated the self-checkout. Okay, I got to do the, I got to do your job. I got to check myself out, right? Okay, you're going to you give me a discount because I checked myself out. So in the last year and a half, all of a sudden it's changed. I don't go to the grocery store anymore. Right. I, it's delivered, right? My expectations have totally changed on that experience and that process. Apply that one example. If you're an industrial company, same thing, right? If, if somebody needed a specification or they needed training manuals or they didn't know how to do some QC or quick fixes, th- they would call up your service department, wait for the guy to show up, and then they would get, get the product problem fixed. Today, it's, huh uh I want it now. You can't come in because we're not letting people in. Right. You have to have a remote experience. You have to have a, 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 a digital remote experience that I can walk through with my technician and your service person how to fix this piece of equipment or solve this problem. The expectations have changed rapidly. And that's the gap, right? People want to keep doing the same thing and expect people to think that's good. It's not good anymore. So, so how about this though, Todd, uh, somebody listening to you saying, okay, that kind of makes sense. I kind of tracking what you're saying. It clearly things change, but you know, we're getting back to normal. Aren't things going to be like a rubber band just back to what used to be anyway? You're asking me some good questions, Jose. Um, I don't have a crystal ball, but I can tell you this. No, I, I don't think they're going to go back. A, a pandemic is an accelerator, right? It turns things that were going at a certain pace and amps it up fast. They're not, they're not going backwards. I'm not going back to the grocery store. I don't want to go to the grocery store. I don't think my example of the service, remote service, I don't think that's going away, right? Why would I pay to fly somebody halfway across the country, pay room and board when I can do it or should be able to do it remotely? People are realizing that they can build relationships digitally. They can, they can solve problems digitally and save the time and money and, and companies and, and speed, right? There's also a speed factor there. So, in, in terms of sales, salespeople are more important today than they were before the pandemic. And what I mean by that is a lot of people will say, oh, salespeople aren't as important. Everybody will do everything online. It's all digital. Some of it is digital, but there comes a point in time where when you really have to make a decision and you really have to understand how to make the right choices, this is where salespeople as peers and experts can really make the difference. People want to self-serve. They want to go to your find a find a um FAC page, they want to go to your resources page mm-hmm. to get the details, the technical information, but the strategic piece, the real value is still human to human and that's sales. So a lot of the process is shrinking away from salespeople back to digital, but the piece that is still part of sales, that one-to-one is more important than ever, right? So- Well, and in fact, just to go with that thread, since it's actually a smaller duration and a smaller part of the overall sales process it's actually more important it's like a diamond's the smaller jewel right then you know you can get cheap you can get knock off you know plastic gems by the bushel but you need that little thing and and i'm a, i'm very much in agreement with you on this point todd that this a good salesperson and that's the caveat right that's a good salesperson somebody actually knows that this has happened that I'm engaging with a customer who's already self-educated 80% of the way there. So how do I add value to that process, right? At the end or somewhere later in the line than 20 years ago, you'd be starting, the salesperson has to kick off the process. Now they have to like, they're like the specialist, the five yard specialist who has to reliably get that touchdown. Well, here, here's here's where I think things are changing. And I think I think there's the human factor is important at the beginning and at the end, like you're talking about, the difference is we used to talk about a funnel, right? Mm-hmm. Sales funnel. A lot of people up here, they just filter down and you get a few at the bottom, right? It's never been a great model, but it's very common. I, I think it's more like a barbell now, right? There's a huge amount of 
need on the front end, right at the very beginning for human to human interaction. And I think then you go into this big cloud of the middle where people aren't making decisions. They've got 10 other projects they're trying to prioritize, but they've got your information and hopefully you've connected with them and you're staying in touch with them. And then at the end, okay, now we're ready to go. That then is, that's the, again, the barbell of human interaction. The front end is critical, right? So this is where companies make a mistake. They try to automate that piece. Right. They try to say, oh, well, we'll, mm. we'll we'll have we'll have top of the funnel offers. We'll put people, everybody through our website. But the reality is you can lose a lot of people at the beginning. So I believe smart companies are going to start the process up front with human to human interactions so that they make a connection and then people build some trust. And then they're going to stay with them in that middle. And the, win the people that do that human to human interaction up front are going to win on the back end. I have a specific example. Sure, uh, we, we have a very large client. It's in the manufacturing and construction space. Very traditional products, big company, national, lots of locations, 100 salespeople. And they had, um, we were experimenting with chat. And they had a person come through on chat and say, you know, I've been reaching out to 30 other companies like yours, right? So that was instructive just in that comment, right? They can easily connect with 30 other companies. Nobody's been able to help me with this problem. Can you help me? They got the right technical person through chat one-on-one -on -one with them, took it offline, solved the problem. And within a couple of weeks, a big order showed up, right? So it wasn't the salesperson making a cold call or anything like that. It was the fact that they had the ability on the front end with chat to be able to connect people. And then they, it resulted in a big sale. So it, it has to be, it has to be, you have to have the back end stuff, which I think most companies do fairly well in terms of sales. Some people might argue with that, but where you can win with tools and technology is make those connections on the front end, get your best people, the subject matter experts connected to people who are early in the process and you'll build connections and trust and give, have the opportunity to build that relationship on the back end. So it sounds a lot like, like this, Todd, that if we, if, as especially at smaller companies, right. That are not enterprise class, right. The classic privately held industrial company, 20, $30 million. Like you said, they have 10, maybe they have a hundred employees or they're a little bit bigger than that. Uh, of uh, salespeople, that technology gives them leverage. So like chat all of a sudden changes the game, how many people I can talk to. I mean, in the old days, you'd plan like three sales appointments for the whole day because you had to travel there. You had to allow some space in case the meeting ran long and, and so you can go to the next meeting. Now you're gonna have, before you had your bowl of cereal, you had three calls or three interactions, right? So, which is very interesting. So to, to, to an owner listening to this and saying, boy, this sounds like I'm going to have to like relearn everything. What would you say to that person? Well, I don't think you have to relearn it. I mean, you know, your business, you know, you're the experts, right? So leverage it and get your experts in front of more people more often, right? Get those three conversations before breakfast, use the tools to, exp to put your people, your best people in front of your best prospects, right? Chat sounds like a headache, right? Oh, I got, oh, the thing just comes in. Oh, I'm interrupted. Oh my goodness. I have to do another chat. Oh, well, guess what? You better, you can qualify quickly. If you know your Walt, right? Right. Qualify quickly, have standard answers to, to standard questions, be able to do it fast. You don't have to have your, your top salesperson do it, but you could, you could certainly have an inside salesperson have that as part of their role. Think of it as it, the beginning of sales, right? It's not an annoyance. It's, it's an opportunity. It's literally a customer raising their hand saying, I'd like to know, can I, can I make some human contact about your product? Right. We should, we should be, ha the bell should ring when that happens. Well, let's, let's talk about websites again, too, because this is kind of the central piece of this. The people, you know, if you have 100 people on your website, how many people convert and actually become leads through your contact us form? Mm -hmm. One or two? Right. How many people call you? A couple, maybe. So you still have 90 plus percent of people that leave. Now, if you're optimized correctly and you have decent content, they're there for a reason. They're not just wait, you know, it's not just for fun. They're trying to figure out how to make their lives better. And, and they're trying to see if you can help them make their lives and their companies better. You got to give them every opportunity to connect with you. I can tell you this, like my wife, my wife will never, ever call you. There is no circumstance in the world where my wife will pick up the phone and call you. Never. It will never happen. So if, the, if your only opportunity to connect is to contact us, she's, you're done you don't have a chance. She's, you better have a, a chat or some other way to connect digitally in, in real time, or you've lost her. So I, that's the way people are. You have to give people options. Your website should be a portal to your people. 
your website should be being able to bring people in and put them in front of your best people so that you can qualify, sort them out, and then start to deliver value by helping them. To me, it's no different than, you know, the old days where salespeople would do, I remember this because I did this. So milk runs around a town, right? You'd go hit 10 companies. Here's some brochures. Here's what's new. But that's how people got information back in the 90s, 80s and 90s, right? Right. That's not, there's, there needs to be a digital version of that, right? Have your salespeople available to do that, but it's going to be digital or to Zoom or or however it's going to be done. Right. It's, and they, it's they, happening. And twice, they can have twice the coverage because they can they can do that. And and it's the way, it's it's kind of like the sales process when people talk about sales processes, something as a sales organization, create your sales process. But in fact, really it should always be, what's the buyer process? What is Walt's buying process? And let's align to that, right? That's I, I think if I'm hearing you correctly, that's a big part of your, your theme. It's all my theme. It's customer centricity means you're out of your head and in theirs and you know them better than, than they know themselves. And, and people, this is another mindset thing, right? People underestimate how good they are at solving their primary ideal personas problems. You do it all day long. You actually know their problems better than they do because you solved a hundred of them. They only have one problem. You solved it a hundred times. So you should be able to give them value and show them a pathway to change better than they can figure it out, right? So this is a tough one too, right? Some people, a lot of people will say, well, they'll reach out and they'll say, this is what I want, right? Your job as a, as a company and, a, and a, a person who's delivering value is to figure out what they really need. And they're not always the same. And if you just say, oh, well, you want X, Y, Z part, great, I'll sell you part. Well, guess what? You're just a commodity because there's no value add there. If they know what they want and you can just, it's just a catalog sale. But if you can dig deeper and really uncover the needs and then address those, now you're a value adder. Again, this is pretty straightforward stuff, but again, it's something people forget. Sure. And um, so so you got to get to that. You're, I would just say this to your audience. You you guys are really good at solving the problems you solve. Give your best people a ch- more chances to get in front of people so that they can do it. You owe it to them to do it. You owe your audience this process because you have what they need. You owe it to them to reach out to them and make it easy for you to help them. Okay. Well, Todd, first of all, thank you for a really great, I mean, with breakneck speed going through some really (laughs) deep stuff for the Revenue Throughput Podcast. It's appreciated and it resonates completely with me in terms of just how I think about things as well and what what I've seen be successful. And, uh, you know, this transition now as we move into whatever the new normal is going to look like and so on if somebody going through that says gee i'd like to find out more about what todd's talking about what's the best way to get a hold of you to make contact and learn more about you sure just go to our website toddhockenberry.com you can also check out our book it's inbound organization and that's also a website inboundorganization.com lots of free resources there and on our website Um, love you to check out the book and um, uh, yeah, we, this is what we do. We, I have a newsletter that I send out to industrial manufacturing folks every couple of weeks. We also publish blog posts and articles regularly on the website. So hopefully you find something you like there. Fantastic. Todd, thank you again so much for being such a great guest. Really appreciate it. Jose, totally my pleasure. I appreciate what you're doing. Keep it up. All right. Thank you.